our Chicago Bears trotting their butts onto uh, Arrowhead there in Kansas City to face the defending champs. Uh, Wayne, who do you got here? Yeah, this does not look good <laughs> for the Bears. Uh, you know, nice homecoming, I guess, for Ryan Poles a little bit. You know, going to uh, the organization that kind of took him in and, you know, got him this uh, whole uh, GM job and everything. So, but, yeah, I just don't see the Bears. Sorry, Bears fan. I just don't see it. Uh, you know, I'm really hard to look at. See, I think he ought to be fired, like, like now. Uh, his play calling has been terrible. Uh, he hasn't been utilizing Justin Fields' strength. Uh, Justin Fields has not been performing well, and I don't know how much the blame we want to give him versus Lugetzi, but Lugetzi has not set him up for success. And I think the Chiefs, you know, uh, a little bit healthier now, a little bit healthier now. They're still kind of banged up, but, it'll, you know, we'll probably have Kelsey and then also Chris Jones from my understanding of everything. So I think that's enough. And then they, you know, this past game, there was definitely a lot of things on Tony and, you know, Sky Moore, uh, I think they had an improved showing. So building up on that confidence momentum, you know, I definitely see the Chiefs winning on this. I don't know what the over-under is, but I feel like it's. Just, I'm just going to go over. <laughs> I'm not even looking. Yeah, I'm double-checking right here. It's a, it's a 12 and a half to Kansas City. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, I, I'm actually going to say this. I, I will take the under on that. Yes, you know, that's I, a yeah, lot. I think the Bears are, because, come on, I mean, 13 points. I mean, Jesus. I mean, the thing is, it's like, I mean, looking at what Kansas City actually looked like having Chris Jones back against the Jaguars, who I think we all can say uh, will most likely represent you know, the AFC South this year, uh, you hold them to nine points on the road. That's pretty impressive. Kansas city. It doesn't look like their offense is in full gear just yet. I mean, they've had two sub sub par weeks for them as an organization, but you know, like you're saying with sky Moore getting on the board, uh, you know, Tony not running around with his head cut off, you know, this week, I think somebody actually said like, he may not even like read the playbook. Like he may not even know the playbook and that's what got him in trouble in New York. But he just kind of goes off his own athleticism and talent and, you know, finds finds openings where he can and things like that. But, um, no, I mean, obviously Kansas City is going to keep uh, marching into the right territory for them as an organization. Like, they're, you know, if not the best, like one of the best teams, you know, out there for this year. So, um, like you're saying with the Bears, I mean, to start off 0-2 is a little bit surprising for me, um, just in terms of, like, what I thought their competitive you know, levels might be this year. And they really haven't really looked all that competitive, but yeah, that, that pocket to me was just collapsing, collapsing, collapsing around Justin Fields. He gets a little nervous. He makes, you know, kind of a jittery throw. It led to, you know, a couple picks and, uh, you know, I encourage to see that DJ Moore is actually going to be a part of the offense. Like if that's the one thing you do, like just, just make him relevant on this team. Cause you know, he looked explosive once, you know, he caught the ball after the catch and, uh, you know, again, Roshan Johnson, you know, in the few touches that he got, he he looked electric. He looked quick. I mean, I look, I was like, you know, if we could just get that guy just more involved, uh, you know, maybe it's one of those things where you just make him the alpha for the week and just see how it goes. I mean, at this point, you got nothing to lose. Like, I like Khalil Herbert. I always thought, you know, his, his yards per carry have always been extremely respectable. It's just, you know, maybe we have a star here and we just need to like, you know, water that plant, let it grow. Like, let's see what it looks like, you know, because we absolutely have nothing to lose this year. I mean, even if we decide, Hey, you know, this isn't our year yet again. Um, let's just try to get as far up in the draft as we possibly can. Like, hopefully we understand what our identity is by the end of the year. Like we know who our playmakers are. We know we have in Justin, whether he's in or out, but the, positive side in me and then just even like the realist in me like i see the raw talent in justin like you don't get to be you know having the second most rush yards for a quarterback you know based on nothing it's not it's not just like luck or you know negative game scripts that led to those you know that record you know and uh i think it's just going to take time seasoning uh comfort i don't know what else it could be but man yeah i'm kind of in that uh that mind frame where it's like if we let him go after this year, if he's just average with a, as a bear, he might thrive in another system with another team. We're going to be like just kicking ourselves in the you know feet over it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's just my whole thing. It's like, you know, with this whole thing with quarterback contracts, you know, year three now, right? And, you know, the, the time's ticking in terms of how much more talent can we get 
on the Bears team uh, and you know being under the salary cap, that's that's obviously going to be a lot harder if we were to extend like Justin Fields, like make make him like a Daniel Jones type of contract of some sort, and you know kind of get pigeonholed there. But at the same time, like he, it does take time to develop a quarterback. I don't like what Luke Getzey's doing at all uh, with the scheming and trying to be all cutesy and uh, not playing to the player's strengths. You know, making uh, Cole Komet like do wheel routes and stuff like all the damn time. Like he's not that agile. So um, and then yeah, like ha- getting uh, DJ Moore more targets. More like he needs ten plus targets. In my opinion, he needs to be a ten plus target type of wide receiver. We need to like look at him. Uh, yeah, ten plus times he need. I, I expect for him to hit, have a hundred receptions by the end of the year. Like that's my expectations for him. Albeit I do have him on my fantasy team too, so uh, that would certainly help. But no, like from a winning standpoint, like he was open several times. That but Justin Fields, whatever the scheming was having there, he just wasn't looking at him. And I think that's design by design. And I also think that's on Justin Fields too. So hopefully they're looking at this. Hopefully they're making adjustments. But Again, this all goes down to, in my opinion, like a lot of it, if I were to divide it up, you know, mathematically, maybe do like 60 to 70% on Luke Getze, not setting Justin Fields up for, for success, you know, and uh, the pass protection definitely is something there that I think is partly has to do with Luke Getze and partly also has to do with just Justin Fields. His strength is just, uh, you know, getting getting the ball and ripping it uh, and not necessarily doing like these five, seven drops, step drops, and then doing it at such a slow pace. He really needs to speed up his drops. Uh, so, I don't know, a bunch of things, a bunch of blames to go around, both on Getsy, the pass protection, on uh, Justin Fields. But in the end of the day, yeah, Chiefs, they're going to win this game, I feel like. so. Yeah. My only other point on Fields is, like, you have to look at him as a playmaker. He's not hes not a quarterback, in my opinion. He's a playmaker. And there's certain guys under center that are playmakers, like Anthony Richardson, um, Lamar Jackson, uh, Michael Vick from the past. You know, there are guys that, like, they are pure, you know, athletes in a sense, and you just have to find a way to utilize them at their greatest strengths. And, like, honestly, if Justin Fields is only getting four rushes for three yards, like, that's not going to help him win ball games. Like we need to actually maybe have him rush for 50 yards and pass for 200. Like maybe that's what the mix is going to be, you know, to, to make him a successful week to week quarterback. And uh, I still think they're just trying to figure it all out. They're still trying to figure out who is this guy? What are his strengths? Like, what are we going to do as a team? Like, I think they're just super confused and it definitely shows. So uh, anyways, they're taking a hard L this week and uh, (laughs) we'll keep it at that. But um, you know, Go Bears. Try to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, gotta look at that under that that that, sh- that should be interesting. Like, I think a lot more <laughs> Bears fans they'll probably be cheering for that a little bit more than like I don't know with the Bears actually winning. So yeah. <laughs>